Okay. We want to go into this. Are there any questions on these hands? All right, we want to get into this five trap. Now keep in mind, there is, there's two very distinct games. One for the dealer and one for the non-dealer. The cards that work for pegging are entirely different, depending on which side of the board the crib is. And we'll get into that also in the Magic 11s. But five is the most easily trapped card in cribbage. A five is the most easily trapped card in cribbage. If you need six pegs, Hold a four and a six, because most people will not lead the damn five. You'd be surprised how many games are settled on the last play. The person was afraid to put the five out there, and so you were smart enough to keep a four or six. And I mean, the count goes to 15 for five, and the last card is six. It's the only way you could win the game. You needed six pegs. And they had to be afraid to lead their five. So five is the most easily trapped. We're going to talk first about how the non-dealer can trap it. We've already talked about the 664. There are some other screwy hands that allow you to trap a five in the dealer's hand. Most of the time you wouldn't want to hold them. The key is you got to hold a card that will allow you to get the count to what? 31. No, we don't want to get to 31 yet. <laughs> we want to... Can, if I'm holding a five with face cards, can I make a score if you say 27? No. No. So we want to have a hand that will allow us to make the count 27. This hand does that. This 10-point card here could be any 10-pointer. It's a lousy hand. But we do have a chance to get the count to 17. How would you do that on that hand? You're the non-dealer, you lead the seven, you lead the seven. You might get lucky and you might put a ten like this on your seven, your pair in. So you got two, twenty-seven, go, three. You'll have them trapped every time if you've got two fives. And unless they're real smart, you might trap them even with one. But there's a good many people that are smart enough when they see the seven and the ten to ditch the five on the next play. And then you, you're you not going to get to run if I lead the five on you. And you're going to say, damn it, that's the one I wanted. I wanted you to keep that one. Six, seven, eight, Jack is the same thing. We want to get the count 27 or better. So we lead the eight, 18, 28. Hope we can pick up the five with a six, seven. Six, seven, nine, Jack. There aren't many ways. The 664 is the best of these, by far the best. But these other hands, these screwy hands here, do offer you a chance to get the count over 26 and chance to trap the five. And I mentioned here the dealer avoids the trap with the lead of the five. So what's the worst thing that happen if I lead my five? You get 15. A lot better to take a chance on two than three and a go is four. <coughs> Dealer five trap works on quite a few hands. And, and a lot of these hands will give the dealer a chance not only to, to get the five trap, but they'll give the dealer a chance to, uh, to pick up the 31. For instance, this is a nice little hand here. Three, six, seven, eight. <coughs> three, six, seven, eight. Now this is the dealer, so the dealer's not leading. And the card led is a tens pointer. Let's say it's a jack, queen, or a king. Well, we make the count 18, right? Why do we make it 18? So we're going we're gonna to make this 11 point combination work since we're dealing. We're going to start with making it 18. Most of them are going to make it 28 rather than make the count lower. Now, the way they avoid you getting the 31 and trapping the 5 is to drop the 5 on your 8 for 23. Now, now what if you count and you lead the 8 and then 
come back with your ship for 15. No, no, we're not leading. If we're sitting over here with these cards. We're oh. not even going to show them to them. They're going to have to play to us. They got the lead. So this is the dealer. This is the dealer's hand. And the same with this one here. Eight, ten point lead. We're going to make the count 18. If middle cards are left, then we're, if they're led, if middle cards are led, then we're going to have to decide whether we need pegs or to play off a little bit. Generally speaking, if a middle card is led, it's to the dealer's advantage to take whatever comes up. If a small card is led, it puts the advantage on the other side of the board. But generally, the dealer will, will outpeg the non-dealer if they're both holding middle cards. So, but our purpose here is to trap the five. And you see here, this is an interesting one here. A two, four, six, seven. I used to play that hand for the 31. And to Lynn Colbert one time, he said, you know, if you'd have played that hand to take 29 <clears throat> with the deuce, you'd have won the game. So if you need pegs, don't take this 31. And if the lead is a 10, we're going to make the count 17. Then it's going to go to 27. We're going to make it 29. If you need pegs, you've still got the 4-6 intact, and you have a very good chance to trap the dealer's five. But if you fall in love with the 31, you've got two. Your chance <laughs> of getting any more is zero. Almost zero. <laughs> okay. You know from past experience that nothing in this game is absolute guarantee. But that's a great hand for that purpose, if you remember, not to take the 31. Two, four, six, seven. Those cards are very good ones to keep. Two, three, four, nine. I don't even know if I mention it here before we get away from it. Two, three, four, nine. Is another very good hand for the dealer on a 10 point lead. Make the count 19, 31 with the deuce, and you've still got the 3, 4. Okay? And that, that also works if you've got a 9 with two 3s and a 4, what have you, you can make it work <coughs> even if you don't have 3 in a row. Okay.